It's been just over six months since demonic forces of Hamas burst over the borders of Israel and massacred over 1,200 Israeli civilians on an early Shabbat morning, October the 7th of last year. They didn't just systematically murder men, women, children, and infants. They butchered them. They violently raped women in front of their families, placed babies in ovens to torture them, set fire to elderly people in wheelchairs, and slaughtered teenagers and children in the most indescribable manner. They took over 250 hostages, 132 of them who still are being held by Hamas terrorists, and five of them are American citizens. Yet while Joe Biden publicly calls for the ouster of the Israeli prime minister, he says absolutely nothing about the American hostages, nor has he demanded their immediate release. In the early days of the Israeli effort to eradicate the cancer of Hamas, President Biden was very supportive of Israel. But after repeated heckling from anti-Semitic leftists here in the country who are calling for the genocide of the Jews, Biden, Secretary of State, Blinken, and prominent Democrat legislators have seemingly turned against Israel. It's disgraceful to turn our backs on one of the only true friends this country has in the entire Middle East, and then to show sympathy for the masterminds of the most uncivilized and barbaric acts toward Jews since the Holocaust. Every civilian death in Gaza, the ones among the Palestinians, it's tragic, but largely avoidable if Hamas would stop placing their own civilians next to rocket launchers and military installations. And when there were unintended deaths of civilians, Israel took full responsibility and even relieved the military officials who were responsible. Let us not forget that when our own U.S. military accidentally killed 10 members of a civilian family in Afghanistan, seven of whom were children, no world leader called for President Biden to step down, and not one U.S. military officer was held responsible and fired. More than ever, we need to stand with our Jewish friends in Israel as they fight for their very survival. And we need to stand with our Jewish friends across the world as they face the worst levels of hate and violence from radical and genocidal forces that would truly carry out the cry of from the river to the sea, which by the way is a call for the murder of every Jew in Israel. When I visited Israel in December, I visited with hostage families, survivors from October the 7th and government officials, including Prime Minister Netanyahu. And I was moved by the sense of deep anguish that was felt among the people of Israel. who were trying to grapple with the violation of their tiny nation and threat to their security posed by Hamas. For Christians, we can and we must grieve the death of any civilian, whether Israeli or Palestinian. But this war is not a war of equal guilt. Israel was cowardly attacked, its people were savagely murdered, and those who did it were even gleeful in their brutal atrocities. Israel has no choice but to destroy every vestige of Hamas. Otherwise, it would be as if a physician treated a cancer patient only to a point and then said, ah, we removed most of the cancer with surgery and chemotherapy but we're gonna leave the rest of it because it's painful and expensive to continue treatment. Doing that would result in the cancer coming back with a vengeance and ultimately killing the patient. Israel can't be partially successful by simply wounding the cancer of Hamas. They must destroy it or Hamas will carry out what it has repeatedly promised, which is to stage more attacks like October 7th again and again. America cannot pretend to be pro-Israel while acting to assist the survival of Hamas. I'm really glad that in the days following 9-11, Netanyahu did not call for the ouster of our president and ask us to have a ceasefire on Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. And we need to act like an ally. We need to act like a friend to Israel at a time when they have very few friends and many, many enemies. And just for the record, I want to be known as being a friend. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video. 
and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.